ago, powerful and kind, that he gathered together goal-oriented people and used their will to create a legacy that we will cherish forever. Today is not only a celebration of our infrastructures rooted from the efforts of our leaders, but also a commemoration of our collective acts and the product of these acts. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Alvin John M. Aligato. And I am Helena Jean Dupa. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Inauguration 2021. 2021. The conversion of Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology to Davao Oriental State University. Ladies and gentlemen, the processional. Dr. Nelson Pastolero, Dean, Institute of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Dr. John Bagal, Dean, Institute of Business and Public Affairs. Engineer Jean C. Ibalier, Dean, Institute of Computing and Engineering. Dr. Gemma M. Valdez, Dean, Institute of Education and Training. Mr. Felix Sansae, Coordinator, DOSCST Banay Banay Extension Campus. Mr. Richard Maravillas, Coordinator, KPL Extension Campus. Dr. Rocky Langkoy II, Coordinator, DOSCST San Isidro Extension Campus. Engineer Franz Gillian Rapis, Director, Regional Integrated Coastal Resource Management 11. Professor John Inoko, Director, CDRRMC. Dr. Geraldine Sacro, Director, Gender and Development Center. Mrs. Maida C. Santos, Director, Library Unit. Dr. Lilibeth S. Galvez, Director, International Relations Office. Dr. Janeth C. Tayone, Coordinator, Graduate School. Dr. Arvin A. Office. Dr. Helena Jean Dupa, Director, Tourism Information and Education Center. Dr. Misael Clapano, Director for Extension. Dr. Roy M. Padilla, Director for Research and Development. Do Dr. Maria Cecilia L. Catubi, Director for Finance. Engineer Emmanuel Barbas, Director for Planning and Development. Professor Evangeline Rivera, Director for Student Services. Dr. Rose Annaline V. Saniza, Director for Administrative Services. Dr. Rosalyn Valles Regino, Director for Instruction. Dr. Juan Franco C. Tayone, Vice President for Research, Development and Extension. Nino E. Dalagan Jr., Vice President for Academic Affairs. Dr. Edito B. Sumili, Vice President for Administrative Affairs. Dr. Joy M. Sorosa, President, Davao del Norte State College. Dr. Ruth S. Lucero, President, Southern Philippines Agribusiness and Technology. Honorable Stephen Paul L. Uy. Representing Honorable Mayor Michelle Rabat. Dean Nursing Gloria Morante. Vice President for Administrative Affairs, Dr. Edito B. Sumili. Honorable Governor Nelson Dayanghira, represented by Vice Governor Honorable Menu U. Catherine Edulan, 
student trustee. Honorable Basilio V. Adlawan Jr., Private Sector Trustee. Dr. Gloria Morante, Dean. Misael Clapano, Faculty Trustee. Honorable Councilor Chino Almario, City of Mati, representing Honorable Thelma Z. Almario, Founder, Davao Oriental, State College of Science and Technology. Dr. Emily S. Antonio and Dr. Lea Jimenez. Dr. Edito B. Sumini, President Emeritus. Xander Alcantara. City Councilor, Honorable Xander Alcantara. Everybody is requested to stand up for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem.
Bansang Awit ng Pilipinas. Please remain standing for the ecumenical prayer to be led by Professor Roland A. Dalagan, Ms. Joanna Mama, and Professor Brian Susada. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Abba Father, the genealogy of the Dauba Oriental State University from the Mati Community College and the Dauba Oriental State College of science and technology is a fruit of a visionary leadership and wise management. Abba Father, bless our founders, Honorable Telma Z. Almario and Honorable Joel Mayo Z. Almario. Likewise, bless our benefactors, Don Jose Coro Martinez, Don Ustinia MBU, Honorable Corazon N. Malanyaon and Honorable Adalia L. Tambuang. Let their good deeds be not forgotten. Their family will endure forever and people will speak of their wisdom. Sirach chapter 44 verse 10 to 15. Abba Father, in the book of wisdom, chapter 3 verse 15, you said, The toil of the righteous bears choice fruit and the wise discernment is a tree that does not wither. Abba Father, bless the past, present, and future stewards of this institution. From Mate Community College, Dr. Leopoldo and Bravo. Tabo Oriental State College of Science and Technology, Dr. Julieta I. Ortiz, Dr. Jonathan A. Bayogan, Dr. Grace G. Lopez, Dr. Edito B. Sumili, Dr. Roy G. Ponce, and Audaba Oriental State University, the faculty and staff. This achievement is not for us alone, Abba Father. This is ad majorem de gloriam, for the greater glory of God. Abba Father, this is not a mere human achievement. For you say in Psalm 127 verse 1, Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Dorso is your handiwork, Abba Father. For that, we praise and adore you. With this, Abba Father, we contemplate St. Os Oscar Romero and Bishop Ken Ontener prayer for us, workers and public servants. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always says all that all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. 
No program accomplishes the church mission. No set goals and objectives includes everything. This is we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that this enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and to do the rest. We may never see the difference between the master builder and the worker, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future that is not our own. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. I will start in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, and greet you with Islamic greetings. And none has the right to be worshipped but you. There is no other God except Allah. He is one. He is the sovereignty and He is the praise and He is the omnipotent. Ya Allah, none can defy that which you bestow and none can bestow that which you look back and the greatness of the great will be on, will be of no avail. Allah, have mercy on our weak souls. We claim to love you so much, but we disobey you so often. Ya Rahman, do not punish us for our actions. We are weak and forgetful. We seek forgiveness from you. There is no other God except you, the ever-living, the sustainer of all existence, and we repent on you. Ya Allah, you are forgiving, and you love to forgive. Please forgive us. All the praises and thanks be to you, our Almighty God, who has guided us to this. And never could we have found guidance, where if not that you had not guided us. Ya Allah, help us to remember you, to be grateful to you, and to worship you in an excellent manner. Ya Allah, you whose goodness is boundless and whose kindness has no end. Grant each of us protection from the trials of this world. Make us independent of its people and allow us to reach what is better than this world. For there is no might or power except through you. Ya Allah, give us eyes to see the benefits of each hardship. Give us ears to only hear your messages in them. Give us a heart to find contentment in your decree. And give us wisdom to turn hardship into blessings. Ya Allah, grant a good end to all affairs and save us from humiliation of the world and the torment of the hereafter. Accept our prayers. Make what is coming better than what has passed. Ya Allah, bless us with good health and prosperity. Bless us with happiness and contentment. Keep us steadfast with patience and thankfulness. Ya Allah, purify our heart from hypocrisy and our deeds from show off, and our tongue from lying, and our eyes from treachery. For in dead only you know the treachery of the eyes, that what, that what lays behind in the heart. Ya Allah, remove all the arrogance and selfishness from our heart, 
and teach us to be humble, to always remember you wherever we ask for your mercy, by which you will guide our hearts, settle our affairs, remove our worries, protect us from, from the unseen. Make our faces radiant, purify our deeds, and inspire us with wisdom. Ya Allah, answer our prayer with infinite mercy, all that we need and ask for, from the dreams of our heart to the prayers of our lips, to our every expectations and aspirations we have. Ya Allah, only you know the secrets of our hearts. Please accept our silent wishes and prayers. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azaban nar. Wa kina azaban nar, wa kina azaban nar. Subahana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Our most gracious and loving Father, that is the academy will start to function as a full compliant state university. We thank you, dear Lord, for instilling great vision at the College of Science and Technology, Honorable Telma Z. Almario, who at the time knew that she will be crossing a difficult bridge and yet unselfishly took the challenge for the sake of good people of Davao Oriental. We thank you, Father, for giving the same spirit to her son, and now the founder of Davao Oriental State University, Honorable Joel Mayo Z. Almario, who do not just give us the thing we need to do, but walk with us until we arrive to this momentous event. Lord, we thank you also for touching and guiding the Chad Commission in Bank, headed by Chad Chairman Honorable J. Prospero E. De Vera III, along with Chad Commissioner Honorable Aldrin A. E. Darilag and other commissioners who do not just wait until we arrive at our destination, but went and offered a helping hand to us. Father, thank you for appointing Dr. Maricar Casquejo as Chad Regional Director 11, because without her full support and facilitating skills, the sailing will be almost impossible. Lord, above all, we thank you for uniting us as an academe even to the most stressing moment of compliance. There are people we hurt as by the innermost requirements and tasks to do. Sorry for all those words we utter, and may you start healing us from the inside that a band of friendship, friendship will continue to arise. Father, to all the people who walk with us in the journey, who unselfishly offer their support, may you return to them a hundred full times of their goodness and kindness. Great Father, today is the day of celebration and the days of our existence as an academy. We don't know what lies ahead of us, but if facing difficult times, please remind us that it is you who brought us to the success and it will be you who will bring us to more success through us. May we become a blessing to the good people of Davao Oriental as we pledge our reliance to your great purpose of Dabo Oriental State University. Great Father, glorify yourself through the Dabo Oriental State University. Amen. Please be seated. The Mandayami's inhabitants of the uplands. It is located in Davao Oriental. The Mandaya's main source of living sir. They plant rice, tubers, and other also great in hunting animals such as deer, chicken, and wild pig. 
This ethnic group has a diverse and unique culture. They are undoubtedly having one of the richest cultural heritage among all other ethnic groups in the Philippines. One of the things to verify the richness of Mandaya culture is the dagmai, a hand-woven textile made from abaca with a mud tying technique. Mandaya has a very beautiful and unique music and dance. As we celebrate this historical victory of the school, we welcome you through this Mandaya inspired dance.
this time, let us look back to the humble beginnings of Mati Community College and Dava Oriental State College of Science and Technology until it became what it is known today as Davao Oriental State University. Ladies and gentlemen, the historical exhibit. Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology, or DOSCST, traces its beginnings to the Mati Community College, or MCC, a local initiative created in 1972 by Mati's local government units under other Thelma Almario's leadership. This was headed by Dr. Leopoldo Bravo, Department of Education, Culture, and Sports Administrator. While any lacked financial support and therefore not responsive, its local leaders dreamt of a government-owned and funded state college that would provide access to higher education opportunities and quality and relevant education. The Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology was established on December 13, 1989 by Republic Act 6807 in response to the need for quality tertiary education in the province. It was a conversion from the Mati Community College or MCC founded in 1972 by Mayor Thelma Almario who, as a congresswoman, authored the law creating DOSCST. Dr. Julieta I. Ortiz from 1990 to 1997. With the appointment as the founding president, the newly chartered college started operations in June 1990. And with its new mandate provided in the charter, curricular programs were reoriented towards science and technology. Classes were initially held at Mati National Comprehensive High School, preferred as the old site until the college moved to its present 10-hectare site, which was 5 kilometers away from Poblacion of Mati in September 1991. Mindanao Agro Pioneers Corporation, owned by the heirs of the late Don Jose Coro Martinez Sr., donated this site, a flat land about 300 meters from Pohada Bay shores. The initial structures were built on the new site. A concrete road leading to the campus was constructed. Electricity and communication lines were connected. Bright and promising professionals were recruited to man the faculty. New academic programs were crafted. And the arduous path towards instituting relevant research and extension programs was blazed. The difficult task of instituting an academic culture comparable to national standards also commenced. To speed up institutional growth, Dr. Ortiz established linkages with other higher education institutions, including other government and private organizations. Soon, some faculty members were sent for advanced studies while senior faculty from established universities were also invited. Simultaneously, the instructional research and extension programs began to take on respectable form and substance. The college library collection registered rapid growth and instructional facilities were relentlessly improved. As the early batches of students graduated, they register respectable performance in licensure examinations and desirability among employers. 
As a college, let us continue to develop leaders, create new knowledge, and apply it to solve both local and national problems. Fully and deliberately contribute to the intellectual and moral improvement of our students. As an academic community, let us develop the attributes of being able to integrate new perspectives, being adept at uh, relationships even beyond our political and geographical boundaries, and being able to live in the province and the region and even Mindanao at every opportunity. Dr. Jonathan A. Bayogan, from 1997 to 2007. He was appointed as the second president in June 1990, the second term in June 2003. During his term, extension campuses were established in San Isidro in November 1997 and Katiil in June 1999. Additional structures were built. Instructional and support facilities were improved, while communication facilities were kept up to date. The faculty profile tremendously improved through faculty development program, mostly through grants and assistance from the Commission and Higher Education, bilateral scholarships, and local assistance. Curricular programs were improved, and short-term courses were upgraded to degree programs. Graduate programs in education were eventually opened through the assistance of the local government units. As a quality assurance scheme, academic programs were subjected to accreditation and some attained level 2 status in due time. Linkages with other colleges and universities were strengthened through resource sharing and collaboration. Research and extension developed as faculty outputs were presented and gained acceptance in regional and national fora. Projects funded by the agencies like the Commission on Higher Education, the Department of Science and Technology, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Agrarian Reform, AUSAID, began to come in. Graduates did not only perform well in licensure examinations, but a few also barged into the top 10 circle. The college also grew in its efforts to preserve and showcase the region's culture and arts. The college gained recognition by representing the municipality, the province, and the region in the regional and national cultural presentations. The college culture and arts groups Dagmayani and Pagdungawan were fettered with recognition among cultural groups regionally and nationally. Capping the term of Dr. Bayogan was the college elevation from level 1 to a level 3 state college. Using a nationwide leveling criterion for all state universities and colleges in the country. DOSCST has the distinction of having the least budget allocation among level 3 SUCs. For the community, college community, to stick on to the purpose and uh, the goals of the college, there is, also a, there is always a reason for an agency to have been built. No? And uh, essentially, if you look into uh, the vision and mission of the college, uh, the vision and mission uh, embodies this dream you know, of uh, having an educated uh, youth that will help uh, in the development of the, not only of Daba Oriental, but uh, beyond it. So for as long as we stick to this uh, mandate, to this vision, uh, we will never get astray. Of course, uh, somewhere along the line, uh, there will be difficulties and challenges that need to be surmounted, but that's exactly why leaders uh, are there, in order that uh, these obstacles can be overcome. Dr. Grace G. Lopez, from 2007 to 2012. 
The third president was Dr. Lopez, who brought with her 32 years of experience from the University of Southern Mindanao. It was during her stint when most subscribed curricular programs and TESTA pattern programs were offered that paved the way for an increase in enrollment. Besides, most existing curricular programs were subjected to re-engineering for ladderization to address granting the dropout students for certification and diploma. As an expert in accreditation, she pushed for the attainment of the most curricular programs accredited. Then, what could have been noting during her term was the BOT's approval for most academic and administrative policies that resulted in attaining excellence in college operation. With her, who advances the causes of women's rights and empowerment, she brought to fruition the establishment of the Gender and Development Office of the College, thus strengthening partnerships with most women organizations in the local government units of Davao Oriental and government agencies in the region. It was Dr. Lopez who explained functions which were deemed necessary in the Dr. Lopez may have been the only president who has served for one term, but she has made an enormous contribution to the college that gave her the title of President Emeritus before retirement. Here is my poem. What's up to be with the left six? A refrain from my soul continues to echo to God be thy glory. That's what it means to be. All things work together for good, says the Lord. Abundance is well, spread all over the land. It springs forth from God for mankind to share and care. There's enough for everyone's need, but not for anyone's grief. Let's all work together to glorify God forever. Infinite goodness is all there is to be. Peace dominates, no wolves, no trouble, unity withstands, no wolves, no division, selfishness fades, giving heart abounds, poverty ceases, everyone's heart dumb beating, happiness is beyond compare. It is indeed a beautiful world to live with the passion of God's creation. DOSCST is one of God's beautiful creation. Continue to build it high, build it strong, let it grow, expand, and develop. No matter, this is a call for challenge. A challenge to do something more. Dr. Edito B. Sumile from 2012 to 2020 being elected as the fourth president of DOSCST he is widely known for his contributions to the physical and organizational transformation of the college. He re-engineered the organizational structure in the academic administration and Research Development and Extension Division in anticipation of the college stations. He is also instrument campus in the municipality of Banay Banay last June 2015. Meanwhile, his initiatives led to the construction of multi-million infrastructure projects, giving the college a total facelift. The leadership of Dr. Sumile has positioned DOSCST's landscape beyond traditional realms by instituting various agreements on academic and research collaborations with a number of universities in Indonesia, Korea, and Japan. With the entire academic community's concerted efforts, 
Dr. Sumili obtained the ISO 9001-2015 certification and the Prime HRM Bronze Level Accreditation, certifying its quality management system. He also paved the groundwork for converting DOSCST to a state university under RA11033, known as Davao Oriental State University, on May 28, 2018. Upon expiry of his second term on January 17, 2020, Dr. Sumili was appointed as OIC President until the Board of Trustees duly elects a new SUC President, then the President Emeritus, to recognize his outstanding contributions to the college development. As a visionary leader, I will never get tired of infecting the community with a desire to seek progress despite challenges proactively. Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, I am assuring everyone that we are beyond the situation and can cope with the challenges it brings in due time. I am sure that with the kind of workforce that we have in DOSCST, we will embrace the challenges and sustain excellence in the new normal. The Davao Oriental State University was established through Republic Act No. 11033 and signed into law on May 28, 2018. Its conversion is a product of shared visions and efforts of 2nd Congressional District Representative Honorable Joel Mayo Z. Almario, who authored House Bill 7007, Senator Joel Villanueva, who authored Senate Bill 1617, the DOSCST administration, headed by its Board of Trustees, former presidents, and other stakeholders. With its conversion, the institution was met with several challenges in order to become a full-fledged university. But the hard work, determination, and consistent efforts exerted by the entire team, several changes and innovations were instituted in various fields such as the adding of additional graduate programs, investment on research projects in collaboration with government agencies. Since 2018, Dorsu has managed to install new infrastructures, improve its human resource capacity, and obtain recognition from various award-giving bodies. This continued development was evident in the institution's successful compliance with the standards and requirements set by the Commission on Higher Education Office of the Institutional Quality Assurance Team last May 10-12, 2021. Under the new leadership of SUC President 3, Dr. Roy G. Ponce, a strategic roadmap was put into place in order to ensure the development of the past administrations continue as DOSCST embraces it's available breakthrough into the future. The call of the day is embracing change. We are at a crucial time of a transformation from a professional college to a university. Surely, there will be systems change. And change is difficult. Some will embrace it with open arms. Some will resist it to death. Others will simply, slowly lag behind. But we learned from COVID-19 pandemic that there are things that we should have been prepared earlier and we are being forced now to embrace. Take for example the ICT and connectivity which is now at the forefront of all our operations. We have to be future ready and make our own new normal. What was once the Mati Community College, which became the Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology, and now the Davao Oriental State University, is a product of hard work of those who paved the way 
for making it the institution that is today. As we gear towards full universityhood, work hard in the present, and strive to contribute to the vision of creating a well-equipped responsible citizenry through a smart and full ready university of excellence, innovation, and inclusion. From the office of the Commissioner Aldrin A. Darilag, congratulations with full compliance to CHED requirements. The Commission and Bank approved the conversion of Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology to Davao Oriental State University. Cheers to the hard work and dedication of everyone. At this juncture, let us hear a congratulatory message from Honorable Mark O. Go, Chair, House Committee on Higher and Technical Education, Second Termer, Congressman of Lone District of Baguio. Please welcome Congressman Mark Go. Second Termer, Congressman of Lone District of Baguio. Please welcome. Congressman Mark Goh. Uh, magandang uh, Congressman of Long District of Baguio. Yeah. Congressman Mark Goh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, our Master of uh, Ceremonies uh, this afternoon. Con Joel Mayo Almario, Congresswoman Corazon Malinaon, Chad Chairman Prospero De Vera III, Chad Commissioner Aldrin Darilag, President Roy Ponce, Governor Nelson Dayanghirang, former Congresswoman Telma Almario, Mayor Michelle Rabat, Mayor Ostina Yu, Mayor Adalia Lopez, Mayor Erlina Nunez, other university officials, members of the faculty, students, admin staff, friends, ladies and gentlemen, magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Thank you for having me this beautiful Friday afternoon online. It was almost five years ago, on October 27, 2016, to be precise, when our good friend, Congressman Joel Mayo and Mario, the said bill was substituted by House Bill 7007, and then later on consolidated with Senate Bill 1617, and eventually on May 28, 2018, the President signed into law Republic Act Number 11033, an act converting the Dabao Oriental State College of Science and Technology in the city of Mati and all its satellite campuses located in the province of Dabao Oriental into a state university to be known as the Dabao Oriental State University. and appropriating funds therefore. It was a long end of us at the Congress and to go through, and it was indeed a triumphant moment when the bill was finally signed into law. But we all knew that the journey is far from over. The work continues, and there is still a lot to be done. Only three years later, the committee, in the Committee of Higher and Technical Education, such pride and joy to see that even in the midst of a pandemic, we can find a reason to celebrate, to celebrate the fulfillment of a noble cause, the fruit of your hard work and dedication. As chairman of the Committee on Higher and Technical Education, I've worked closely with CHED even long after the law has been enacted 
in the exercise of our oversight functions and to see this institution work towards its goal of full compliance in a span of only three years, even during the pandemic, is not only commendable, but inspirational. From the time Chad and our committee conducted the initial joint ocular evaluation back in 2019, all the way to the virtual validation just last April with Chad, the panel of experts, our committee, and of course, Congressman Almario, you have proven that you are deserving of a university status and able to use that status in furthering our goals of quality and accessible higher education for Filipinos. And just last Thursday, May 26, 2021, Chad and Bank has ultimately determined that the Dabao Oriental State College of Science and Technology has fully complied with the requirements for university status. To the board, to the president and the officers, all the members of the faculty, the non-teaching personnel, the alumni and the student body, I'm honored to share in your triumph. This dedication in achieving your goal in spite of the odds is a testament to your unity as an institution, the commitment of all the employees, and the vision of your leadership. You have come a long way from where you started out as a small community college back in 1972, and in witnessing how you perform in the last three years, I cannot help but be excited for all the innovations and accomplishments that we are about to see from you. Subject, of course, to the formal awarding of the Certificate of Compliance by the CHED, allow me to be the first to say this. Congratulations, Dabao Oriental State University. Again, thank you, at magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Thank you very much, Honorable Mark Ogo. This time is the unveiling of the university maze to be initiated mm -hmm. and to be initiated by the following personalities we have honorable Thelma Z Almario founder of DOSCST represented by honorable Chino Miguel Almario councilor city of Mati also honorable congressman Mayo Z Almario founder Davao Oriental State University Dr Edito B Sumili president emeritus and Dr Roy G Ponce First President, Davao Oriental State University. May I direct all your attention to the university maze. The Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology as an educational institution committed to unceasingly pursue its vision of excellence, innovation, and inclusion continues to reach greater heights, furthering quality service as a university. Hence, the conversion of the college to Davao Oriental State University served as another milestone in encompassing its quality educational contribution in the province of Davao Oriental and the academe at best, and thus forming a new logo. The formation of this logo includes the following components. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please witness the unveiling of the University Maze. A warm applause, everyone.
of the province's young dreamers to join the Philippine Military Academy or PMA and Philippine National Police Academy of the PNPA as respective authorities granted his examinations at DOSCST. This endeavor attracts significant number of applicants from the province. Currently, MZA serves as the majority floor leader of the Commission on Appointments and a member of House Committee's Good Government and Transportation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the father of Dorsu, Honorable Joel Mayo Z. Almario for his message. Alcohol. Please take your seats. And please uh, allow me to remove my mask. You know, as uh, we heard the speakers before me, including uh, the history of Dorsu, I asked President Troy, what else will I say when everything has been said? So can I share some secrets na lang? Ingon siya, pwede. So, secret number one, every time I see Ma'am Dupa, I, I'm reminded of Demi Moore. 
Kamukha ni Demi Moore, eh, no? From the movie, ano sa ito? Ghost, ghost ba ito? <laughs> Kamukha. And uh, I came, uh, I saw, and I conquer together with you our dream of having a university in Mati, in Davao Oriental. Let's go back. Singit-singit na lang ko sa mga nasulti na. Let's go back to 1972 when Telma Almario was the mayor of Mati. And the problem at that time is that most jobs were filled by people, most jobs in Mati were filled by people from other places kay sila ang may mga diploma, sila ang may mga graduates. And for those positions filled by people of Mati, dito na po kutob ang taga Mati, kaya di ma-promote-promote paano diploma was a requirement. And so, with that problem, Telma Almario saw it proper to, to establish the Mati Community College. Problem number one, there was no funding. Walay kwarta. And this, we have to learn even today. Because in 1972, kay walay kwarta, ang gihimo niya, ang Mati National Comprehensive High School buildings gigamit sa high school daytime sa pagkagabi gigamit sa Mati Community College. So there was no need to build school buildings and classroom for classrooms for the MCC. Kay naghinulamay lang man. Think about it. If all the national high schools nationwide, or let's talk about Mati, if all of them will have a learning program and make their buildings available for this program after school hours for the parents in the barangays, daghan siguro ang makabaton o mayong edukasyon para sa mayong kaugmaon. Because there's no need to look for funds to, to build buildings as what Telma Almario sh showed us when he, she established MCC. Problema, problem number two. Teachers, how can the municipality of Mati with, uh, in 1972 uh, with so little funding hire teachers? So what Telma Almario did together with Dr. Leopoldo Bravo was to encourage people from the private sector to share their talents and teach at the MCC. So did to the MCC among the teachers na ay police. Police by daytime but teacher by nighttime. Na ay doctor. By daytime, professor. By nighttime, na ay nagtrabaho sa regional trial court, na ay abogado, na ay huwis. By daytime, by nighttime, teacher. Ang uban for free, pero nagkaroon ng honorarium. And I remember very well in 1989, in 1988, ang honorarium sa magtudlo sa MCC was 14 pesos per hour. No? So, it was an innovation and it was at MCC when there was a vacancy to teach management where ako as a rural banker by day would go to MCC to teach management by night. No? Without any more collecting my honorarium. Because I gained more than the honorarium. Met some friends and at one time, 
After my class, I was walking in the corridors of MCC and passing by a classroom. Nakakita ko teacher nga puti kaayo og paa. She was a CPA, Certified Public Accountant. She was a CPA, Certified Public Accountant. Practitioner by day, teacher by night. Kunya Katusya was the first time I saw her. And when I asked the people, kinsa man to siya? Ingon sila, si Nancy Jess, nga akong naasawa. Ah, Nancy, ha? Kita mo naman yan, ha? Swerte gani si Chino, ang akong anak, ang height na liwat kang na. Nancy, kay ko na liwat. It was 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 like a youngest. Youngest sibling na mo. and convince them to donate 10 hectares of land libre and help them convert the other remaining lands of the 200 hectares to non-agricultural kay di man maayong agriculture dere in fact she brought here the secretary of the department of agrarian reform para makita ang yun mismo sa sekretary ang kahimtang sa lugar and diha na convert dayon into a residential property mo nang Martinez subdivision so if not for them lisod pud kaayo no so we have to give credit to Martinez in fact now let me tell you another secret akong gi Tanaw ang mga tag-iya sa mga yuta around the college. Daghan ka yung mga government uh, office, uh, government employees na in one way or another nakatabang sa pag-process sa conversion sa lugar from agricultural to residential. So akong giingnan ang pamilya sa Martinez Ang akong inahan nagtabang sa inyo ha. Wa ninyo hatagi og yuta. Jokingly. Akong gipangutana.
Itubag ko nila. May. Ang among gidonate para sa State College, 10 hectares. Across the country, gisaysay na po niya ang legislative process. So, I find that bill converting the State College into a State University including all, all, including all the attached uh, Campuses, so apil na ang Katiil, Nahimong University, apil na ang San Isidro Banay-Banay, in the Governor Generoso say, College of Agriculture and Science and Technology, GGCAST. Apil sa akong original bill, to put this on record, is pati ang Governor Hinoroso GG Cast Mahimong University. Okay. Gifile na ko ang bill sa House of Representatives. Gifile, thankfully, ni Senator Joel Villaneva sa Senado ang Senate version converting the college into a university including all its campuses including GG Cast and one of the prominent residents of Governor Generoso is here with us, Director June Adlawan, member of the Board of Trustees. But on the eve, on the eve, Ugma in deliberate sa House of Representatives, Karong Adlawa, nakadawat ko o tawag that govern the the leaders of Governor Hinoroso, the officials, did not want GGCAST to be included na Mahimong University for many reasons. So I told them, gai ko og black and white resolution because I will use your resolution to amend my own bill. So, pagkaugma, on the floor, which is very strange. Walay author sa iyang bill nga siya po ang magpa-amend. Ako palang siguro. Kaya ang bill na ko included GGCAST, pero ako po ang nagpa-amend to exclude GGCAST kay mao may gusto sa mga opisyal sa Governor Hinoroso nga wa sila ilabot. So I had it amended and also sa Senado gi amend po nga ito and uh, approve sa House, approve sa Senate o oh, karon We were already nearing May of 2018. Ang problema, the President has to sign it pa to become a law. So when we were at Malacanang finishing touches na lang itong pagpirma but the work behind that Ngawa ninyo may bawi was enough to give me a lot of stress. Kaya adtoon pa na ako sa PMS, Presidential Management Office, pangitaon, ang tao nga po mo pirma, hangyoon. Then mo adto pa ko sa Office of the Executive Secretary, ES Bingbong Medjaldea, together with my staff, si Jane, nag Sulod-sulod minga to sa mga opisina to look for people para gyud mapirmahan ni presidente. And uh, to cut the long story short, 
It was signed on May 28, 2018 in Malacanang where, where Uh, 17 of college giuban pag atong ato giuban ni president edoy sumile wala kanyang ewa ko mabuhat presidente nag Because Minidoy, for the president to come to land, Chairman, siya itong akong kaistorya ganina, itong paglakaw na ako, dito to thank Congressman Mark Go, because as chairman of the committee, I wait for things to happen. He made things happen. He called for, um, for meetings, several meetings, Ched, to appear before his committee and to update him on the status of bills which became Republic Acts on the establishment or conversion of souks. No? So, uh, no chairman has ever done that except Congressman Mark Go. No? That's another secret. So, finally, here we are uh, celebrating again on my birthday. Actually, ang end bank Commission and Bank meetings at CHED was supposedly May 26, uh, May 25. Mona ilang schedule. But I spoke with Chairman, CHED Chairman Popoy De Vera, who requested CHED to move the end bank meeting from May 25 to May 26, kay birthday niya ang May 25. So, daghan mga birthdays involved there, no? So, on that 26th, they reviewed the endorsement made by CHED Regional Director Maricar Casquejo. And I also would like to put on record my deep appreciation for RD Maricar Casquejo for helping. the institution comply and get over para ma-convert ta in, ma-certify ta as compliant to operate as a university. Okay, so 
if I can give, uh, if I can share some secrets. When I received the message that the theme would be creating a smart and future-ready university of excellence, passion, and inclusion. Huh? Creating a smart and future-ready university. Nananghid ko ni President Roy. Ngayon ko, Press Roy, I suggest ang atong would be creating a well-equipped and responsible citizenry through a, a smart and future-ready University of Excellence, Innovation, and Inclusion. And I would like to, to emphasize that now. Because we are here for the citizenry, not for the university. Medium lang ni siya. Mo lang ni ang pamaagi. This, is, this should never be a refuge of smart people, talented people to have jobs. Dili, ha? You are here because you got what it takes. But your mission is to create a well-equipped and responsible citizenry. No? So, let's sa Ateneo, sa Ateneo nami kanta Bumaba ka sa bundok. Uh, nami kanta ni anak composed by uh, <clears throat> Last minute ako nga pare, forgot his name. The same composer of Hindi Kita Malilimutan. No? Norman. Norman Agatep. No? So, bumaba ka sa bundok should be the message. You are not a university on a pedestal. We are not here to brag that we are a university but right outside we have problems of drugs rape and unsa pa diha we are not here to keep ourselves secured comfortable in air conditioned rooms very beautiful buildings world class state of the art pero ang pedicaber wa pagani kakita sa sulod Igo ra siya mo dawat og pasahero sa estudyante nga mogawas. So we must be the the medium to share the blessings that we receive by using our positions in creating a well equipped and responsible citizenry. And that Kung ako pag yun ang hubaron sa simple kaayo. Simple kaayo. Because I really want this to happen. Nagsweldo naman ta, o kamo, dire, aircon naman mo, guapo ang li, state of the art, better than the library of Ateneo de Manila. That's true. Better, di ba, Cheng? Sana naman, Inigawas nato sa campus, buhion po nato ang sense of volunteerism in cleaning the sidewalks. Sana naman, we go out of our comfort zones in helping develop Mati. Not only through what we offer here, but in our own way sa paglabas po nato. Mauna, I want to Walang, walang katapusang pasasalamat ning ako ah. President Troy, President Emeritus uh, Edoy, because I asked them, pwede ba? Pwede ba? Is it possible to invite farmers and conduct meeting here para makita nila ni? Pwede ba to invite Toda para makita po nila nga ang giskwilaan sa ilang anak mo ni? 
Because the more they are enlightened, the more they see what's inside, the more inspired they will be to do more for the society. No? So, uh, I'm, 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 uh, kanina I was asked, kung sa doon feeling na ako na nahimo ng university dere, and my direct answer was speechless. No? I'm just so happy. I'm just so overjoyed because today is another embodiment of my motto, Mayong Edukasyon para sa Mayong Kaugmaon. And I'd like to thank all. I was the author of the bill and you called me the founder, you called me the father, but that will not happen if you did not inspire me to do what I did if you did not help me, if you did not comply with the papers. So um, um, let me bring back to you the honor. Let, let me give back to you the honor and the credit of our celebration today of having a university. So salamat kayo ninyo na naningkamot even to our uh, members of the Board of Trustees. They're here with us. Uh, sa ato mga public officials, they're also here with us uh, as themselves and, or as representatives. Salamat kayo sa akong mga staff sa Congress Office sa uh, Mati and Congress Office sa uh, Manila. Uh, salamat sa ato mga partners, ang atong uh, DENR o ang other government agents. Guard, dire sa mga gate nga nagbantay para huwag makasood nga di mao. Salamat sa ato mga gardeners and everyone else. So, with this, I, I leave you with a challenge, with a challenge. We are here on a journey and we come and go. Kami, as officials, next year election, malay ko ba if we will still be here in our positions because buagi mag-election, only God knows. No? Kamu, you are permanent, most of you are permanent employees, but time will... come, you will be my age. <laughs> Salamat kayo sa akong barong. Salamat kayo sa ade. Ang, uh, ang effort ni Nancy Anne, always behind the scene, pinakumalimtan iyang ginaprepare. Chino here. Sige po, follow up sa ko ah. Niyanin ako ang mga... <laughs> Pero di pa upaw. <laughs> Gloria. This is all for the greater glory of God. Pat, mayong hapon. Thank you very much, sir. And happy, happy birthday to you. Sir, God bless you. Next is the inaugural speech of the first president of Davao Oriental State University. He is our former vice president for research and development extension, or RDE. He finished his degree in statistics at the, at the Mindanao State University 
Iligan Institute of Technology or MSU IIT and a graduate diploma in Econometrics at the University of Southeastern Philippines. He is a two-time alumnus of the University of Melbourne in Australia where he completed Master of Assessment and Evaluation as a first class honor and Doctor of Education in Evaluation Capacity Building as a recipient of AusAid and Australia Award scholarships, respectively. As Vice President for RDE in the last six years, Dr. Ponce has expanded the college RDE operations by increasing its funding capacity and operationalizing various RDE centers that focused on agriculture, coastal management, cooperative development, culture and arts, disaster risk reduction and management, Filipino language, gender and development, and tourism. Meanwhile, Dr. Ponce is a well-known researcher and extensionist. He is an international research awardee for his works on biodiversity conservation, education, and evaluation capacity building. He also played a significant role in the successful encryption of Mount Hamigitan as the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Additionally, Dr. Ponce is known for co-founding the Happy Fish Kids or HFK, an after-school care project in underprivileged and underserved communities which eventually afforded him the prestigious Australian Alumni Excellence Awards in 2017. Today, two other programs, the Happy Forest Kids and Happy Farm Kids, have been institutionalized as an offshoot of the HFK. With pride and honor, ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome the first president of Davao Oriental State University, Dr. Roy G. Ponce. land sa mga lumo na kagan au mandaya and to the pioneer families of the province my most profound respect my warm regards to Ched Chair Prospero Popoy de Vera III members of the board of regents under the leadership of Commissioner Aldrin A. Darilag and the Board of Regents who are present here, Dr. Misael Clapano, Honorable Rochi Ravelo, Honorable Vasilio Adlawan Jr., Honorable Catherine T. Edulan, Congressman Mark Go of the House Committee on Higher and Technical Education. He did his speech live. Thank you for that. Uh, Congressman Go, and to our CHED Regional Director, Dr. Maricar Casquejo, Dorso Founder, Honorable Joel Mayo Z. Almario, DOSCST Founder, Honorable Thelma Z. Almario, Congresswoman Corazon Malaniaon, Governor Nelson Dayanghirang, the mayors where we have our university campuses. Honorable Mayor Michelle Rabat of Mati City, aptly represented here by Stephen Paul Uy, our city councilor. Mayor Justina Yu of the San Isidro Campus. Mayor Adalia Lopez of Banay Banay. And Mayor Erlinda Nunez of Katiil. LGU Chief Executives of Davao Oriental and also the SUC Presidents who are here, Dr. Joy Sorosa of DNSC and Dr. Ruth Lucero of SPAMAS. Thank you for visiting us. 
All members of the academic community, esteemed guests, and students, this day is an exceptional occasion for all of us. Today, we welcome the dawn of a new age of Davao Oriental's biggest higher education institution, the Davao Oriental State University. Palakpakan nato. The vision of becoming a premier higher education institution started since the inception of Mati Community College, carefully passed on to Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology until the birth of Davao Oriental State University. To borrow the words for, of Isaac Newton, we are only here today because we have stood on the shoulders of giants ahead of us. As such, it is appropriate to owe this breakthrough to the people who have led us. My grand salute to the family of the MCC founding dean of college, Dr. Leopoldo M. Bravo. The OSCST founding president, Dr. Julieta I. Ortiz. Second president, Dr. Jonathan A. Bayogan. Third president and president emeritus, Dr. Grace G. Lopez. The fourth president and president emeritus, Dr. Edito B. Sumili. These are the founding academic leaders and presidents who paved the way towards this historic milestone. Gives of our dear Congressman Joel Mayo Zial Mario and Honorable Thelma Zial Mario who laid the educational blueprint of Davao Oriental, ushering quality higher education to our doorsteps. Of equal importance are the contributions of all academic community members, benefactors, donors, students, and stakeholders whose names we cannot all mention individually, but remain active key actor, active key actors of institutional development. Rest assured that all your efforts are well recognized and will forever be etched in the university's history. The birth of Dorsu is a gift to humanity. Let us extend our celebration to the local and indigenous communities of Davao Oriental and beyond, so they may emerge more victorious than we are. As a gift, the university is promised to vessel social, economic, and environmental sustainability. In this way, we can foster a well-equipped citizenry in this side of the Philippines. Can we show the declaration? The declaration uh, slide. Pede. Uh, not control. Oh, not that. Dilisa na siya. Uh, the declaration slide. The congratulatory slide from Chair Popoy. Okay. I want to emphasize this because this is the declaration sent to us virtually. Sent by uh, the chair of the Commission on Higher Education, J. Prospero Popoy de Vera III, and our commissioner, Aldrin A. Darilag. This citation sheds requirements. The commission and bank approve the conversion of Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology into Davao Oriental State University. Palakpakan na to. With this pronouncement and the remarks of Congressman Mark Go a few minutes ago, I cannot help but renew my commitment and convictions and to the challenge of Congressman Mayo Almario. Indeed, this day is the culmination of all the hardships and challenges we gracefully face in our preparations. But more importantly, this day marks a new chapter that Dorsu will be unfolding. As the first university president, I am faced with greater challenge to lead and carry on 
the endemic and lasting changes of the university and the community it serves. Lastly, I'll show you the dorsal helix. This will be our monument. The dorsal helix is to be established beside the flagpole. and illustrate the future direction of the university responding to the challenge of Congressman Mayo Almario as the founder. This dorsal helix embodies the dimensions model of the university. On the top is the sphere. This is what the dear Congressman challenges. This sphere represents the societal goal of human fellowship. The product are well-equipped citizens prepared for the future, but the purpose is deeper human fellowship represented by that sphere. At the forefront of attaining this academic challenge of equipping, equipping human capital with the highest ideals is through the helixes representing by this double strand triple pillars, namely research and innovation, teaching and learning, and engagement and production. The base is a lifelong depiction of multifaceted hopes and dreams of all Dursu stakeholders from which everything stems. If you notice, it's not a regular, uh, it's not a regular 3D dimension thing because it represents everything multi-phase from the political dreams economic dreams, academic dreams. For sure, in the future, we will be navigating in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. However, with this new unique brand of unity, I am confident that we will surpass the hurdles together. Let me lead you as we embrace a university culture like the Philippine eagle flapping its wings at the start of its flight, like the sea turtle that swims freely for centuries in one of the world's most beautiful bays, and the firm stature of the Mount Hamigitan as UNESCO World Heritage. Let me lead you as we transition towards a smart and future ready university. Let our leadership team propel you as we continue to build an academic stature of excellence, innovation, and inclusion. Congratulations, everyone, and praise God. Thank you very much, sir. Our next speaker is Honorable Thelma Z. Amario. She is a certified public accountant. She is an incorporator of the Rural Bank of Mati Incorporated. She worked in SISIP, Gores, and Valayo SGV auditing firm. At the same time, college instructor at the University of San Carlos. Honorable Almario was elected mayor of the capital town of Mati in 1968 to 1976. During these years, she assisted the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Mary Academy in organizing the first municipality organized by ordinance, the Mati Community College, or MCC. In December 30, 1989, she authored RA 6807, 
an act converting MCC into a state college known as the Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology, providing for a charter for this purpose, expanding its curricular offerings, redirecting its objectives, and appropriating funds, therefore. Honorable Almario became an OIC mayor in 1986 to 1987. She was elected and re-elected House of Representative Congress of the Philippines for three consecutive terms, 1987 to 1998. She is the co-author as Vice Chairman of House Committee on Appropriations of Annual Appropriations Act in 1989 to 1998 2008 to 2014. Recognizing that educational development should start in the early years of a child as a preparation for formal schooling, Honorable Almario authored RA10157, Institutionalizing Kindergarten into the Basic Education System. Realizing three to five-year-old children to have social skills and learning, she authored RA104, one zero, the Early Years Act for the three years and below five years old. The various laws she has authored largely focused on providing accessible quality education by creating elementary and secondary public schools to numerous municipalities of ba and barangays in the second district of Davao Oriental. As chairman of the education social services sector, she worked with UP President Jose Abreva for the adoption of the socialized tuition scheme in UP Mindanao. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Honorable Thelma Z. Almario, the founder of DOSCST, to be represented by Chino Almario, Honorable Chino Almario, Councilor of City of Napi. A big round of applause. Um, hey. Trendsetter dito si Papa. Uh, okay, so um, I am speaking on behalf, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm speaking uh, in the person of my Lola, Congresswoman Thelma Almario, as she prepared a speech that she would want for you guys to hear. And she says, Looking back decades ago, the Mati Community College, the first college in Davao Oriental, organized in 1972 during my term of office as, as then Municipal Mayor of Mati, after 17 years of providing tertiary education. By virtue of Republic Act 6807, I authored, had been converted into Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology. And by virtue of Republic Act 11033, authored by Congressman Joel Mayo Z. Almario, DOS CST was converted into Davao Oriental State University. Congratulations to all who have labored and have given the best of themselves to make Dorsu University compliance possible. Tirelessly confronted through many challenges, today we are benefiting the fruitful outcome of their labor, the very significance of celebrating a full-fledged university in our midst. Mati Community College and DOS, DOS CSD had been administered wholeheartedly during their respective years in their mandate of providing tertiary education, especially Especially in those times where there was barely any tertiary education or institution. That all with Dorsu, we pray that Dorsu would be steadfast in pursuing our vision of a university of innovation and inclusion. I would be regretful if I conclude this message not congratulating and thanking in public Congressman Joel Mayo Z. Almario for Republic Act. 11033, 
He principally authored Converting Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology into Davao Oriental State University, giving its significance in our celebration today. And furthermore, our fervent prayer that the first president, Roy G. Ponce of Dorsu, be not left alone as he faces the complexities of the challenges adherent to the administration and operation of the highest institution of learning in Davao Oriental, but that we shall always be with him at all times. Again, congratulations to all of us. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Councillor Chino Almario. At this juncture, let us hear a message from Honorable Mayor Michelle N. Rabat, City of Mati, to be represented by Honorable Stephen L. Uy, Councillor, City of Mati. My greetings and utmost respect to each and everyone's present. Kanatong tanan, maayong hapon. Maayong hapon, Congressman Joel Mayo Almario, our founder of the Dorso, and at the same time, our birthday celebrant today. And of course, together with him, my young wife, Ma'am Nancy, and also representing the former Congresswoman, also of the 2nd Congressional District, Honorable Telma Z. Almario, we have here Honorable Chino Almario, who is a colleague of mine in the Sixth City Council together with Honorable Sander Paul Alcantara. And of course, to everyone here, to the mentors of this institution, to the SUC presidents, of course, to our President Emeritus, Dr. Sumili, and of course, Dr. Roy Ponce, Sir Rochi Ravilo from the alumni, to the family of the whole institution, to each and everyone my utmost respect and greetings. Today, we are here to celebrate a very special event whom we are dreaming for a very long time. That's why each and every one are gathered to witness and celebrate this celebration from the provincial government to the city government and to the all agencies are involved. We have here to represent the provincial governor, Honorable Nelson Boy Dayang Hirang, who is also my twin brother in the public service, our provincial vice governor, Honorable Nino Sotero L. Uy Jr. And of course, today, I will be representing the local chief executive of the city of Mati, Mayor Michelle Nakpil Rabat. Please, each and everyone, allow me to convey to you the message of our city mayor. And here it goes. My warmest greetings and sincere congratulations to all. I am personally happy to share this wonderful and positive development with the Dorso community. This very important milestone in the city of Matis history, a university in this part of the Davao region. This puts our beloved city in the map. This is the long cherished dream of every Matinya. Most especially my father, former governor, and the first city mayor, Francisco Paking Rabat who envisioned the city of Mati as a center for education and culture in Davao Oriental. It will catapult the city of Mati to greater heights in every aspect, in commerce, trade, and tourism. It is also but fitting to recognize all the efforts and countless hours of blood, sweat, and tears in making the dream come to reality. Dr. Edito Sumili, and the faculty and technical staff, the Martinez family, former Congresswoman Telma Z. Almario, Congressman Joel Mayo Z. Almario, and to all the officers who served in the university from its inception to the present, to all who have helped in the undertaking. Our prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving to our God Almighty. And since we have now our university, I encourage the university to strengthen the support for fisheries, agriculture, science, and other environmental courses, such that we have our guests from the DNR, from the national agencies. Of course, 
these programs are one of the city's focus, especially that it's included in the priorities of our annual investment plans and programs. Again, my sincere congratulations. I am excited for the future of the university and I'm equally hopeful that the years ahead will bring huge success and many wonderful opportunities for Durso. Kanatong tanan, maayong hapon. Thank you so much, Councillor Popong Oy. Next is a message from Honorable Hustina MBU, Mayor, Municipality of San Isidro. Kindly play the pre-recorded video of Honorable MB Hostina uh, Yu. Is the video ready? Okay, we shall go back to Ma'am Hustina you later. Next is a message from Honorable Adalia C. Lopez, Mayor, Municipality of Banay Banay. Please welcome her. It's another pre recorded video. Thank you very much, ma'am. Another message will be given to us by Honorable Orlinda Nunez, Mayor from the Municipality of Katiin. Congratulate the DOCST, now the Dorso, for making this far. It may be a long, long way for you to become, but with your positivities, concerted efforts, and make all roads build to become a Dorso. I am a successor of my husband, who was then a municipal mayor of Katiil Davao Oriental, Camilo Toruba Nunez, who believed and pursued that DOCST will be established in our town way back July 23, 1999. His ardent desire that DOCST will cater the younger generation to generations of Katiil and Boston in their quest for brighter tomorrow, whose dreams were to achieve promising future and better lives ahead. The success story of Dorso today, in our humble town to be particular, reflects how Katiilinos was eager to cross lines with a shared and inextricable history and how we stand after the hard days. Now we are reaping good harvest because many who graduated from Katiil campus has been employed well, both in government service and private sectors all over the globe. I am happy to share with you this story because I so value the efforts of my husband, former mayor, because all these visions and endeavors was not put in vain. In fact, it became the legacy of the long-term administration. To the doors of family, we rest assured that my administration will continually support 
what has been vested by your sector. More power to do so. God bless and keep up the good job. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Erlinda Nunez. Now, let's hear another message to be given to us by Honorable Nelson Aldean Kiran, the Governor of Province of Davao Oriental, to be represented by Honorable Nuno Sotero Aldi, Davao Oriental Vice Governor. I'm sorry, Vice Governor. Thank you very much, sir. Maayong hapon sa ito ang tanahan. Of course, before I proceed, just allow me to extend my greetings sa ito ang mga, of course, sa ito mga benefactors to Dr. Prospero de Vera, the third of the Commission on Higher Education, Dr. Aldrin Darilag, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Congressman Mark Go of the House Committee on Higher and Technical Education, my respect to the founder of Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology, our former Congresswoman, Honorable Thelma Z. Almario, who is ably represented here by City Councilor Chino Almario. And of course, my respect to our founder and the father and the birthday celebrant of uh, Davao Oriental State University. We have here with us Honorable Congressman Joel Mayo Z. Almario, together with Ma'am Nancy Diaz Almario, to our past presidents, especially Dr. Edito Sumili, our University President, Dr. Roy Ponce, other officials of this institution, our deans and directors, heads, and the faculty and staff and entire administration of this university, the members of the Board of Trustees, Sir Jun Lawan and uh, Cap Rochi Ravelo, Dr. Joyce Rosa of Davao del Norte State College, the representative of Mayor Michelle Nakpil Rabat, Honorable City Councilor Pupung Uwi, Dr. Ruth Lucero, the President of Southern Philippines Agribusiness Marine and Aquatic School of Technology. Sa ato ang tanan, nga na adinhi, usbunako maayong hapon. Good afternoon, in behalf of the Provincial Governor of the Province of Davao Oriental, Honorable Nelson L. De Young Hirang, who would have loved to be with us this afternoon. But right now, he is on leave due to some inevitable circumstances. That is why he requested me to be here and to deliver his message for this very historic occasion. And this is the message of Honorable Governor Nelson L. Dayang Hiram. Today is history unfolding, a reality turning itself right before our very eyes. We are now on the grounds of a full state university institution priding itself as a gateway of innovative education in Mindanao, in the country, and even beyond. It is with great pride and pleasure to join you in celebrating the historic conversion of our highly esteemed institution into a full-fledged university. I especially rejoice in that moment when the seemingly elusive status is finally in our hands. Thanks to the hard-working officials jointly turning every impossible endeavor into possible ones. Let us be grateful, people of Davao Oriental, for we have our very own institution. We can proudly say our own. I, for one, could utter the sense of ownership, for we too in the local government units are as proud as you in bringing this torch of pride, signaling dynamism, and relentless quest for quality education not just for the benefit of the whole province, but to the whole nation. Being the true trailblazer for world-class quality of education, you are indeed the vanguard of hope, the catalyst of change in Davao Oriental. The Davao Oriental State University, formerly Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology, have always been an inspiring and active partner of the provincial government in crafting and implementing cutting-edge innovation. Those government projects and programs that have become life-changing and a dream come true for the people of Davao Oriental. We are deeply grateful and happy that such meaningful and fruitful active collaboration have resulted in huge success. It is my fervent hope that our collaboration will further expand so the seeds of this partnership 
will help shape a strong and prosperous Davao Oriental. I look forward to a more productive engagement and collaboration with you. Once again, my warmest congratulations to your historic conversion into a full-fledged university. All the best to you, and may God bless us all. Thank you, Governor Nelson L. Dayangkirang. Maayong hapon kanyang tanah. Thank you so much, sir. from the municipality of San Isidro. Ma'am. I remember that was in November 1997 that the first college class of 55 students opened in a borrowed classroom of the Batobato Bato Elementary School. All 55 students were members of the local government's Philippine National Police and municipal employees, all of them were forced to get 72 units of college subjects in order to get permanent LGU positions, a requirement under the Local Government Code of Republic Act number no. 7160. Since then, San Isidro Campus has thrived and graduated thousands through its portals in its present 12.5 hectares campus by the hill. San Isidro is so grateful for the thousands of professionals the college has produced since 1997. These young men and women whose dreams and rich opportunities in life could never have been if Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology or DOCST did not have a campus in San Isidro. So, thank you, Dava Oriental State College of Science and Technology, and congratulations and welcome, Dava Oriental State University. Thank you very much, Honorable Yu. This time, I request everyone to stand. Let us sing together the Dava Oriental State University song.
that marks the end of our program. Thank you very much. Cheers to Dorsal and Beyond! This time we would like to request our guests to please proceed to the...